Hey guys, welcome back to your online lessons. I'm just going to be running through my first lesson here for fifth year Spanish. And um, if you haven't watched any of my sixth year lessons yet, my name is Katie. And I'm the Spanish teacher up here in the academy. Now, this is going to be really handy because anyone who's watching this is going to be able to follow along. All that you need to do is either, if you have started doing your role plays for your oral exam already in school, you might want to just run and grab your notes for those if you happen to have them, or your copybook or something. My day school students, you are going to need your role play, role play booklet. Um, that we have obviously been working through. Um, I'm going to be working through role play number five today because my students up here have already done role plays one, two, three, and four. Um, so I just want to kind of keep the ball rolling, get this ticked off the list so we don't have to worry about it when all of this panic is over and we're actually back to regularly scheduled events, okay? Um, if you haven't a clue what I'm talking about and you're watching this now just because you're trying to stay on top of your own study at home, fair play to you first of all. Um, what you can do is if you just run onto examinations.ie and um, there should be a list of like the 2021 Leading Cert Spanish role plays and just make sure that you're actually, look, you're actually looking at the right ones because the six years have different ones than you guys, okay? So you guys are the first year to have these new role plays, okay? So I'm going to be looking at role play number five, which is the last one. And basically what these are, are how your oral exam next year is going to end, okay? So your oral exam at higher level is 100 marks out of 400, so it's 25%, so it's obviously quite significant. And um, now with regards to the role plays, the role plays are like a godsend, okay, because they're actually worth 30 out of 100 marks. So if you were to absolutely nail these, you could pass your oral exam without having to say anything else. So we love that, okay. So basically what we're going to be looking at here is the role play number five. So, Averia de Coche, which is basically just like your car has broken down, okay, so breakdown of your car. Um, so basically just to run through again the marking scheme and stuff we've got 30 marks out of 100 for these you're only going to be asked one it's going to be the last part of your oral exam i definitely recommend trying to stay on top of them this year so you don't have to stress about them next year um, and basically what you have to do is there's going to be four things that you have to learn all for each role play and each one of those is going to be worth six marks which leaves us then at 24 marks now if i want to get 30 marks what i have to do is and what we're going to be looking at later on in our lesson today, I have to answer uh, like a random question that is relevant to the situation at the end of the exam. So the examiner is going to ask me something about my car breaking down at the end and I just have to answer him with a correctly conjugated verb that shows him that I understand or her the question that they've asked and then I just get my last six marks which is going to bring us to a total of 30. Okay, so before we jump into the role play again, I'm just going to give you your five verbs. So if you saw any of my six year um, lessons, you'll know that I always like to start my class off with like five to ten random verbs in English that you would then just be used to practice your Spanish. I just find it a really useful way to just make sure that you're staying on top of your revision and that you're not making silly mistakes in terms of grammar, okay? So our five kind of verbal structures that we've got today, we've got the people are angry, are you thirsty, I would love to go, she likes dancing and they like the pizzas, okay? So you might want to pause the video there for a sec and just give those a go and um, I'm just going to go through the phrase of the day as well. So. Yo no me doy por vencido, if you're a boy, or por vencida, si eres chica, if you're a girl. And in the midst of all of this panic, this is how we say in Spanish, I don't give up. Okay, so podemos utilizar esa frase en el examen oral um, para hablar de, de, las, de la presión, del estrés de los exámenes, de cómo estudiamos en clase de las cosas que hacemos para prepararnos para los exámenes, todo eso. Okay, so you can use that to talk about maybe the pressure or the stress that you're under and what you do in spite of that. So I just think that's a lovely little phrase and something a little bit more upbeat, okay? Now, and looking at our verbs, so maybe if you had to go with these, you might want to just go through these in terms of corrections, okay? So the people are angry. Now, I guarantee you, at every single stage in your Leaving Cert exam next year, guys, you're going to have some some way for the State Examination Commission to make sure that you know how to use this word here, la gente. Now obviously, if we're talking about people, it's more than one person, so in our heads it's plural, and we use it as a plural noun in English as well, we would say like that, the people are angry. Now in Spanish, this noun is actually feminine and it's singular, okay, so that's why I have the word la in front of it. And grammatically speaking then, because it is a feminine singular noun, everything that goes with that has to be singular, whether that's a singular verb, so I'm going to use like the he or she version of the verb, whether that's an adjective, which would also then have to be feminine as well, okay? So what I'm going to say here is, la gente está. Okay, so again, I'm going to use the he or she version of the verb estar. And the word for angry, it's really fun to say actually, is la gente está enfadada. And again, I'm going to keep that 
as feminine singular because I'm matching the noun that it's describing, okay? So la gente está enfadada. Are you thirsty? Now again, I'm asking a question. The first thing I need to do in Spanish if I'm asking a question, I need to put my upside down question mark beside the question itself, okay? So the verb to be thirsty is to have thirst. So I would just say tienes sed. So sed is thirst, if maybe you didn't know that. So tienes sed, are you thirsty? Literally, do you have thirst, okay? I would love to go, again, in Spanish, what goes up must come down, so I need to have my upside down exclamation mark here. Now, I would love, so I'm going to use the verb encantar, and I'm going to put it into the conditional. Me encantaría, and then I'm just going to follow it with the name of the verb to go, ir. Me encantaría ir. Now, she likes dancing. So for these two, this is again another huge area of concern for the SEC with regards to Spanish. They love asking you about things that use the word la gente. And they also then love using verbs that follow the same structure like the verb gustar, okay? So she likes dancing. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to work from the back and move my legs forward. So in Spanish, if I'm going to talk about loving or liking or annoying or anything like that, I'm always going to talk about the verb that I'm referring to in the infinitive, right? So I'm actually going to say she likes to dance. So I'm going to use the verb to dance, which is by la. Now obviously this is singular, so my verb gustar is going to be in the singular as well. So I'm going to use gusta. Okay, and then my pronoun that I'm going to use with the verb gustar to refer to her is going to be le. So le gusta bailar. Okay, so literally, it pleases her to dance. Okay, she likes dancing. Now they like the pizza, so again, let's just write the word the pizzas here. So las pizzas. I really nearly just spelled the word pizzas wrong. <laughs> okay, so las pizzas. Now what they like is plural, so I'm going to match my verb with that, so I'm going to have gustan. And then the pronoun that I'm going to use for who likes it um, is they, so my pronoun for that is les. Okay, so les gustan las pizzas. Okay, so now that we have that kind of little introduction over and done with, let's have a look at our role play. So guys, if you're watching this and you are one of my students up here, or if you're in my grounds and you happen to have these notes with you as well, um, estoy en la página número 14 y 15, right, so I'm on pages four, 14, sorry, and 15. So just to kind of give you an insight, right, this is what you're going to have in the actual order exam when you're doing it in 2021, okay? So the examiner is going to have their card and then you're going to be given the English version of what you are going to say. Um, and you can obviously have that in front of you during the exam, okay? So to give you our context, right? So like I have up here, here's our background. So tenemos aquí en español. So in Spanish, we've got Estás conduciendo de Madrid a Lugo en la autopista APC y el coche se te ha parado. Llamas por teléfono a tu compañía de seguros para ver si pueden ayudarte. So you're driving from Madrid to Lugo on the AP6 motorway and your car has stopped. You ring your insurance company to see if they can help you. So I'm going to be the examiner here and I'm being told on my card that so you are working for an insurance company and the candidate's car has broken down on the motorway. He or she rings to see if you can help, okay? So, oh, and we're causing mayhem. <laughs> anyway, right, so let's have a look at our actual role play here. Sorry, I'm all over the place, guys. What's new? Okay, so if we have a look then, end up back in any little key face on page 15. Okay, I'm just going to actually read through, I'm not even going to read through the examiner's part, I just want to read through the bit that you guys are going to be learning, just so you're aware of how everything signs, okay? So, my first part here, so my car has just broken down, I'm on the AP6 motorway, so that you don't know exactly where you are, but that you passed through the till half an hour ago. Wait, in Espanol, right? So in Spanish. Mi coche se ha averiado y estoy en la autopista AP6. No sé dónde estoy exactamente, pero pasé por el peaje hace media hora. So what you might not know there, and sorry, I just want to double check um, my notes here. I just, I think that I might have tweaked them slightly. Um, your notes might say el autopista. That's just pure error on my part. It should be la autopista. So you might just want to mark that for yourselves, guys, okay? So I don't know exactly where I am. No sé dónde estoy exactamente, pero pasé, past tense of the verb pasar, to pass. I passed por, then I'm going to use this through, and then el viaje is the toll or the toll bridge. Hace media hora. So that might actually be new for a few of you guys. This is how we say ago in Spanish. So hace plus some sort of expression of time is ago. So, por ejemplo, if I wanted to say four years ago, I would say hace cuatro años. Okay? So just a handy thing to have. Okay? So, so then I would say I see the exit sign 156 in the distance. 
I ask them if they can send out a mechanic or maybe a tow truck because I think that the problem is serious, okay? So, en español, veo el signo de salida, número, sorry, número 156, a lo lejos. A lo lejos is like far away from me, okay, in the distance. So, veo el signo de salida, número 156, a lo lejos. ¿Puede usted enviarme un mecánico o a lo mejor una camión de remolque? So that's how you pronounce that word there, guys. It's re monke, okay? Or if you can't roll your words, you're just going to say re monke. Pienso que es un problema grave. And again, masculine noun, un problema, it ends in M-A for man, okay? So pienso que es un problema grave. Ask then if they could give you a replacement car so that you can continue your journey to Lugo. Say you have to collect your parents from the airport in Santiago de Compostela. So, ¿me podría dar un sustituto para que pueda continuar con mi viaje a Lugo? Tengo que recoger mis padres del aeropuerto en Santiago de Compostela. Okay, so again, I'm going to use the verb um, poder there in the conditional. So, could you? So, ¿me podría dar un sustituto para que pueda continuar con mi viaje a Lugo? Tengo que recoger mis padres del aeropuerto en Santiago de Compostela. And then for my last thing that I'm going to say, so I need to say it is red SEAT Ibita. The registration is 4620CFK and that is them checking that you know your numbers and your letters in Spanish, okay? I bought it second hand from my auntie and I have never had a problem with it before. So, es un rojo SEAT Ibita. Please do not say Ibita or Ibiza, anything like that. It's Spanish Ibita. La matrícula es 4620C. FK. Lo compré de segunda mano, and that segunda mano, okay, even though it ends in an O, mano is actually feminine, and I would say to my students up here, the easiest way to think about that is that women get manicures, okay? So, lo compré de segunda mano de mi tía, y nunca antes he tenido un problema con él, and that word él is referring back to the car. Okay. So I would say that, and then I'm in the position where the examiner is then going to start asking me a potential random question. So guys, if you have your notes in front of you, I'm just going to fill this in on page 17. Then we're finished with these notes until next year, which is brill. So I've got 10 potential random questions, and me and Dill up here have to try and think of these um, ourselves, because you know in class we'd usually be trying to get you guys to think of them, just so you're kind of more in, I suppose, the right headspace as to what you would do if you were asked a random question, how you would come up with your answer, whatever. But anyway, I'm going to do all the hard work for you today. So we're going to have 10 questions, okay? So the first one is going to be, ¿Cuál es, so what is, or qué es, su número de policía? Okay, what is your, um, like your policy number? So if we're talking about insurance, like what is your policy number? So again, I would just start my answer here with saying, mi número de policía es, and then say whatever your, whatever numbers come to your head straight away, it doesn't matter. Okay, número dos, they might say to me, que es su fecha de nacimiento? So, what is your date of birth? And again, I would give them a full sentence, okay? I'm going to make sure my verb is conjugated correctly. So, I'm going to start my answer with mi fecha de nacimiento es, and then just make sure you might say something like el 6 de agosto, or something like that, okay? So, we want to make sure that you're getting your months and your numbers right there, okay? So, eso es la segunda pregunta, entonces, número tres. If they were kind of thinking on the spot, they might say something like, ¿Qué ha pasado exactamente? What exactly happened? Which I would think is probably one of the hardest things that you would have to say um, in the sense of you have to think of like a situation on the spot. Um, but in, in that case, you could say something like, I'm not exactly sure. So even just to give you that structure, so no estoy... completamente seguro o segura para decir la verdad. And I would just think that if you were going to be asked that, that's a lovely way of showing the examiner that you've understood the question, but you just don't want to risk losing city marks for incorrect verbs just because you can't think of a situation off the top of your head. So all I'm saying here is, no estoy completamente seguro if I'm a boy or segura if I'm a girl. So I'm not completely sure to tell you the truth, okay? 
So, and that is answering the question perfectly, and we don't have to think about it too much. Okay, number four then. They might say something to me like, Hay una estación de servicio. Or they might say, Hay un garaje. Cerca de usted. Is there a service station or a garage um, near you? Okay, and again, we're going to try and be in the habit of remembering that the examiner is going to probably address me formally, especially if. Um, yes. Oh, Siri. Guys, Siri listens to me all day. <laughs> Sorry. That is literally, that's real life class with Katie. Like, I swear to God, that literally happens every time I'm in the classroom. Okay. Now you see, we're actually doing this in real life, okay? Um, they might say something to me like, está herido o está herida. And if you don't know what that means, that I'm saying there, are you injured? Okay, está herido o está herida. Okay, número seis. Something like, ¿qué tipo de coche necesita? Para el sustituto. What type of car do you need for the substitute? Say you might just say something like, No me importa, pero necesito algo un poquito más grande. Okay, so I don't really care, but I just need a little bit of a bigger car. Something like that. Um, you could be very bougie and say like, Oh, solo necesito una Tesla. Or you might need a certain brand of car or whatever if you're trying to make the examiner laugh a little bit. Um, but again, we can keep that nice and simple for ourselves as well. So what type of car do you need for the substitute? Okay, they might say, and this is, this is me and Dill really kind of getting to the, <laughs> the bottom of the barrel in the sense of what questions we we're thinking of, okay? Um, so, ¿cuándo van a llegar sus padres? Okay, when are your parents going to arrive? ¿Cuándo van a llegar sus padres? Okay, so that's número siete, and you would say, mis padres van a llegar I don't know, a las siete de la tarde or something. My parents are going to arrive at seven. Okay, they might, they, and you see the thing is, right, with a lot of the examiners, I suppose from my own experience um, of hearing what students get asked, I think it's so funny, but a load of them always just get asked, like, really out of, out of nowhere questions, just being like, why are you here? Why are you in Spain? Why are you studying Spanish? Um, but anyway, that's a good question to have because it means then we can get easy marks, okay? So, ¿por qué estás en España? So, why are you in Spain? Trying to dodge the coronavirus, maybe? I don't know. Okay, número nueve. ¿Cuánto tiempo? How much time? So, ¿cuánto is how much or how many? So, ¿cuánto tiempo va a pasar? How much time are you going to spend? And again, this is all in usted. That's why I'm using va and not vas. Va a pasar con... Sus padres, how much time are you going to spend with your parents? Y la última, number 10. Um, just again, this is going to sound very random, but just in the sense that this is about insurance, um, and I'm saying that I'm in Madrid, but like I'm obviously in my oral exam and stuff, they're going to know that I'm not actually Spanish, okay? So they might say something like, oh, do you have travel insurance or something? Um, just because you're obviously meant to be on holidays or you know studying in Spain or something. So tiene? Una poliza, so poliza is a policy, um, and again that accent is on the O, so that's how I'm going to pronounce it. So tienes una poliza, so tiene una poliza de seguro para viajar o de viaje. So do you have a travel insurance policy? Okay, so tiene una poliza de seguro para viajar. Okay, guys, now if I was going to be um, I suppose driving is all mad. I would now going to give you your homework, right? Um, I'm also going to go through these more, well, hopefully if we ever get back to real life school, but if and when we do, um, I'm going to go through these with you, or if you're paranoid about them and you want to send me them on my Instagram or um, leave a comment and say that you want me to correct them or something, that's absolutely fine, but your homework will be to prep answers for questions one to 10. And then that's just, that's your all place good. Okay, you'll have all five of them 
all together you had tests on one to four I might have to give you a test on, one, on number five when we come back and um, but if you have your answers don't put that then that's another box ticked okay so we just my gracias and I will see you really soon adios <laughs>